Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. We are here for our next session. This is going to be a Diamond Sponsor session or Diamond Sponsors and Digital. And this is going to be location based routing, a primer. And uh, originally, this was going to be done by uh, Caleb Branch, who is uh, um, one of the, the VPs of the company for uh, market management. However, he had a, a family um, emergency that he was dealing with. So we are here with. Uh, Shane, and he's going to be filling in. He is the market manager for the uh, state of Indiana, also for uh, for Indigital here. Thank you for stepping in and being able to do this. this is going to be good, man. Take it away. All right. Well, hey, thank you very much, Ricardo. And you know, um, Caleb shared with me his slide deck and everything late last night. So I'm I'm going to muddle through this, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, we can get through uh, the slide deck and be able to answer everybody's questions. But as uh, Ricardo said, I'm uh, uh, Shane Rackway. I'm the Indiana uh, market manager. And we're going to talk a little bit about geo routing uh, events and next generation call routing. Um, and uh, in, here in Indiana, we've done uh, quite a bit of the uh, events. Uh, we also have uh, one uh, permanent geo route set up uh, for a county. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll go through that. And then if anyone has any questions, we'll, uh, we'll catch up with questions, uh, towards the end of the slide deck. So, um, we're really here talking about, um, geo routing and, um, you know, uh, the goals of next gen 911 is built a redundant, reliable next gen 911 as net, um, next gen 911 services provide, you know, a geo-based route, location services, um, legacy uh, 911, inoperability, text to 911, uh, service visibility, monitoring and compliance, and um, and provide backup safety net for 911 services. Um, the simplified current transitional method of geo-routing, you know, so this is kind of the simplified uh, version or method. Um, the call comes into the network and is held for about eight seconds. Uh, the database is dipped and the call is routed to the appropriate PSAP based on the coordinates that are presented in the database dip. Um, the eight seconds, as you'll see in some, some slides later, is really to, to get that, that information from the carrier, the location information. And we've got some information we'll show you um, you know, kind of the studies that we've seen on, on the network. The, the simplified end state method of geo routing is one, uh, call comes into the network with an attached uh, PID FLO or presence information data location object, uh, XML document. Two, the uh, PID FLO is cross-referenced with the location verification function or the LF or the LVF. And then three, the call is routed to the correct PSAP based on the verified coordinates uh, during the cross-reference. So all this happens really in a fraction of a second. Um, but you know, if you're waiting on carrier information, um, it, it takes a little bit more time. And we'll we'll kind of talk about that in, in further slides. Uh, work needs to be done with the carriers and location providers to establish a PIDFLO handoff between the carrier and the network. Um, a spatial interface uh, needs to be established to verify location data against the state GIS set. And then call handling system must be upgraded to receive this new type of PIDFLO based alley. Um, how to get to the end state of the geo route simplified, you know. So, you know, we're, we're gonna, you know, work needs to be done with the carriers and you know, location providers establish a handoff between the carrier and the network. So we need that PIDFLO handoff so that way we can do a uh, location-based route and then the spatial internet inter interface needs to be established. So basically, the 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 GIS set is is queried. Uh, with the location information that we got from the handset, so we know which PSAP it needs to go to, and be able to route that that particular call to the appropriate PSAP based on the GIS set that we have. Then the call handling system uh, must be upgraded to receive the new type. So that's that's the 91 network, the uh, PIDFLO based alley information. 
um, so we'd be able to route that call you know through the network so here here we have some uh, examples of some event geo routing uh, projects that we've done we've done um, a couple here in Indiana which we'll 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 show but uh, quite a few down in Alabama that are all geo routed so the process uh, to set up an event um, geo route testing, you know, turn up that that whole system is we we build boundary and upload it to the ESRP, and we can do that in a couple different ways. Um, the the county or the, um, the the city, whoever it is that we're doing the geo route, can can send us a shape file, a, a geo shape file that we can have uploaded and verified, you know, to uh, to make sure that it's, it's meeting all the parameters that we're looking for. The other method is, is you know, we can, we can you know, work with you on drawing out what those boundaries are and then have our internal uh, team you know, draw up those boundaries and then build it within the ESRP. You know, e either method, method works. Um, if you already have a you know, boundary layer, that, that, that works to get the uh, process uh, going and kind of Kind of streamline it a little bit, and then everyone's all on the same page of exactly where that boundary is going to be. But um, then we have someone inside, um, someone inside the boundary to do test calls with AT and T, T Mobile, Verizon. Um, you know, just just make sure that everything is is geo routing and that we're seeing everything on the network. And we can do it a couple different ways um, uh, in digital consent. Somebody on site. Um, or you know we can work with you to uh, to have someone with each of the carriers to do the, those tests. Um, I'll explain the Indiana one how that kind of process kind of worked once we kind of get to that one and you know kind of kind of explain what what we did there. Um, route calls to a special event um, PSAP um, test transferability to to primary PSAP. So you know routing them to the event PSAP. So if you set up a, a special uh, center just to do that or if we um, if you have those routed you know to a special prime primary piece up we can we can test those we also want to make sure that you can transfer any call to to any piece app that you may need to so you want to make sure you have those transfers set up um, test test your ability to train you know to uh, uh, ability from the primary piece app so in other words you know, calls that may land at the primary PSAP, we want to make sure that you can get them to the event PSAP as well. Um, and that's part of that transfer back and forth. And then uh, test admin dial, dialing and transfers. Um, if there's any admin, you know, calling that we want to make sure you'd be able to transfer those and do all the, the, the admin dialing, you know, from the, from the event PSAP, you know, and uh, be able to do those transfers. But then also uh, turn off the um, turn on and turn off boundaries, you know. So make sure that all those systems work. And then uh, here the 2021 Elkhart County Fair, which is actually in Indiana. This is one that we we set up, um, or actually I helped set set up uh, uh, here in Indiana. Now Elkhart County, I, I believe Elkhart County is probably the largest county fair in the state of Indiana. It's a, a um, it's actually a multi-week event, and uh, during the 10, 10 days of events that we really focused on here with the study that we did after the after the uh, fair, um, you know they hosted performers like ZZ Top, uh, the, We Are the Messengers, uh, Trace Bryant, uh, Chris Lane, Darcy Lynn, um, and then they had an incident command that was man that managed uh, all the 911 calls that was actually on site here. They actually uh, set up in the uh, uh, in the uh, extension uh, office here on the fairgrounds, and they processed 157 911 calls during the 10 days of events. And so uh, the pin plots uh, on the map you can see um, are the different um, the different days. Um, that the uh, the calls came in and and where they kind of they plotted. Now, if we didn't get a geolocation on the calls, the county is the primary piece app. So all the calls ended up dropping uh, to the county, and then the county could transfer those calls uh, to the event uh, piece app, the special event piece app, and and the event piece app could transfer calls to the county just in case you know that they got calls because the um, 
because of the way this is kind of set up and everything, we, we kind of set the, uh, the geofence around the fairgrounds, but you could get calls within the fairgrounds that would, that would route. And you could end up with some, some border uh, calls or call types that, that maybe you would need to transfer to the county. So that way the county was able to, um, you know, dispatch out appropriate emergency uh, personnel. Um, if it wasn't, you know, something that they, the uh, event PSAP could handle. So this, this event, you know, we did this and, and set this up. Now the testing, how we did the testing is the, um, um, they were able to have, you know, carriers with all, you know, or cell phones with all the carriers. And then um, I worked with the, uh, the event planner and um, they sent uh, uh, somebody out on a golf cart, and drove around the uh, fairgrounds and did test calls with all of those carriers. And um, so while we were doing all those test calls, we were able to, to track those calls coming into the network, verify that everything's working right. And then uh, we were able to actually shut the uh, geofence off. So all the calls went to the, uh, to the primary PSAP the county. And then um, the primary PSAP or when the, the event actually started, then the uh, event PSAP would turn on the uh, geofence and then turn it off at the end of the day. So that, that's how the Elkhart County, you know, kind of worked out. Now, uh, georouting using Mevo anywhere, and that's pretty much what, um, what, what was used in the, um, uh, in the Elkhart example. But um, in the Rock of the South, an outdoor country music event that occurred August 13th and 14th. Um, during the event, calls within the geofence were routed to a Mevo anywhere kit that was on site. Uh, the boundary was activated and deactivated each day via call to the NSOC. Uh, that's the in digital NSOC. Uh, from the personnel on site. <clears throat> so, you know, th these are, this is the same process that we used at Elkhart. And then with Rock of the South down in Alabama, they have um, the geofence set up, which is kind of displayed with the, uh, the red dotted line. And then um, the different areas of, of the, the event, the camping, the parking, the food and drinks, the VIP parking, main stage, and the RV parking is all labeled there on, on the map that Caleb has provided. And then uh, red, yellow, and blue is based on which days those calls came in. And so you, you can kind of see, you know, as calls came in, which day it was, how those calls were routed, you know, and these, these calls would have been routed to the event uh, PSAP, which was a Mevo Anywhere kit, while it was actually uh, manned. Uh, if you were not going to man it at night, then you would want to turn that geofence off. And then those calls would be directed to whichever primary piece app is responsible for this, this space. And, um, and then when you, you, you have the, the event or the incident command center uh, occupied, then you can turn that event on and then start taking those calls directly to, to that point. Uh, another, uh, another, uh, example of geo routing um, is the, the Yellowwood uh, 500 race. A uh, total of 73% of the calls were geo routed during the event. And then you can see the pin plots for uh, geo routed and non geo routed calls. So, so 51 uh, looks like 51 geo routed calls and 19 uh, non geo routed uh, calls. And so as, as you see those calls and the, the pin, pin plots where, where those calls were allowed, uh, located. The non-geo-routed calls were calls, <clears throat> not that they weren't geo-routed, you know, that, but just that we didn't get the information soon enough from the carrier. So we then went ahead and made a determination that we need to route that to the primary PSAP rather than maybe the event PSAP. And then, so we routed it, and then we got the uh, location information kind of on the back end of that. Now, once the primary piece out gets that, you know, based on your own uh, policies for the event, how how do these things get dispatched? Does the primary piece out, you know, go ahead and handle that call, or are they gonna they they going to uh, transfer that call to the event piece out? Those are all based on whatever procedures you've established with that event between the primary and the event piece out. But, um, you know, how are they, they handled those calls, you know, that call was delivered and, and you know, emergency re response was dispatched. So, 
let's move on to the next one. So permanent geo routes, <clears throat> and we've got one of those events here in Indiana, which we're not going to talk about here, but um, in Alabama, they've, they've done a couple of these permanent geo routes. So we kind of look and see what those are. So the Oakland class of service, you know, kind of looking uh, the May and June uh, 22 data, you know, you're seeing uh, phase one and phase two data, um, phase two, 67%, phase one, 24%. Uh, the the w, WRLS uh, calls, you know, 5%, and then your VoIP um, uh, calls 4%. So, you know, you see where uh, the vast majority of your calls are all wireless calls, but, you know, we are getting enough uh, phase two information that we can make a geo route on that. And then you kind of take a look at, at the, um, um, you know, some of these, some of these numbers here, hundred percent of the calls were over the eight second threshold uh, were from Verizon, basically Verizon's, uh, and we're going to show you that in, in another table here. Uh, Verizon's uh, location information is a little bit slower than some of the other carriers, um, but I'll show you that here in the next slide or two. But the geo routed calls under eight seconds, uh, response time, location for the location service, um, you can see the total number al almost 51,000 calls were geo routed under eight seconds. And then calls uh, falling back to the tabular or, you know, what we were looking at, you know, with the uh, phase one information, 141 calls, you know, were, were over the eight seconds. Um, you know, the other calls that, you know, we can't use location information because they were either a wireline call or maybe even a VoIP call. So th those calls totaled uh, um, all, a little over 4,700 4, calls. So, um, this call sample, um, 55,639, you know, so let's look at the, um, so the, here's the, uh, the table, you know, talk, talking about the calls. And so, you know, if you look across the, the, on the table, we're looking at AT&T, um, Band, uh, Connex, um, Entrado, um, Envoy, Sprint, uh, Tele, Telenex, uh, T-Mobile no, T and uh, Verizon. And so as we're looking at those, uh, looks like, you know, your AT&T band, uh, your Connex, um, and your and your Sprint, and maybe even your T-Mobile, all those calls were getting pretty quick responses for location information. Um, when you start looking at, um, you know, Verizon, you know, Verizon looks like it's the, it's the biggest one there. Um, you know, two seconds, 2.5, going all the way out to where you see the biggest band in the seven to 7.5. And you still have an eight, 8.5, and then a nine plus, you know, before we're getting that, that location information from the carrier. So, you know, if we are, are doing a geolocation route, you know, um, you know, as, as you're looking at these, the vast majority of, as soon as we get the location information, we're routing that call. It's the Verizon calls that, that are taking. Now, if we hit the eight second mark, what are we doing? We are routing that call and we're not waiting for, for that geolocation information. And that geo, geolocation or that location information is gonna be coming. Um, and, you know, it may require you to hit refresh on your, um, on your CP equipment or whatever equipment you, you may be using, if it's a Evo Anywhere phone or, or um, uh, you know, your primary CPE, you know, hitting that refresh and trying to get that, that location information to refresh on you. So um, counties in Southern Illinois, um, you know, carrier comparison, you know, so uh, the majority of the calls over five seconds for um, alley response. Um, and if you look, you know, Verizon again is still in that, in that group, um, that seven, 7.5 and, and, and more. So, you know, the, the tables kind of look uh, very similar, you know, um, but um, looks like, uh, you know, there, there's another, you know, big jump at the 3.5 or four seconds with AT&T and, and band. So, um, you know, so there, there is, you know, you know, from, from these graphs, you know, things are pretty consistent, uh, clear across the board on, on some of that stuff or at least, you know, from, from one market to another. And the, these numbers are, are some similar, there's some similarities in Indiana that we are seeing as well, you know, here in Indiana with these times.
um, permanent geo routing, uh, Oakland, Oakland County. So look, looking at this, you know, pre geo routing, you know, calls, hundred percent of the calls, um, um, 160, almost 164,000, um, calls and then transfers. They had about, you know, well, they had 1,354, um, calls that that they were transferring so these these are calls that you know may have transferred for several different reasons but probably main reason is is because the call you know wasn't we didn't have a geolocation so they actually had to transfer to the appropriate piece app you know post the geo routing you know we're looking at a call sample um, of um, 14,000 oh I'm sorry 146,781 and those transfers uh, went down to uh, 900 um, 952. That's a, that's almost a 400 um, call decrease. But of course, the total sample here is is uh, less than the the pre geo routing uh, sample that we were looking at. So you know, Caleb Caleb marked this as a 0.17 percent decrease in transfer volume. So between you know the pre geo routed or post geo routed. In Indiana, the uh, the permanent geo routing that we we did, we kind of did a study. And I can't remember the exact numbers, but we kind of we looked at the the total transfer uh, savings, you know, the, the the time saved in transfers, and and looked at that as a, a response time increase, because you know if if you get a call that's not properly routed, and then you know once the that piece app that took the call figures out where that caller is and then tries and then not tries, but transfers that call to the appropriate PSAP, there's time lost in a response, you know? So what, for every call that you have, you know, those numbers really add up. And so with a, uh, a geo route, you know, a proper geo route that, that just saves time on a response. And so we, we looked at that now. That that study we did several several years ago. I can't remember what the total time is, is saved, but I'm certainly you know anyone on this on this uh, show could could look at your your total transfers and try to figure out you know what what can we save you know with a a geo route you know how many minutes or seconds can we save on each call um, which all add up to the the total number of transfers that you may have. You know, so permanent geo routing, you know, Jefferson County transfers before and after. So looking at this November and December, you know, uh, 562 uh, transfers in November, and then it dropped down to 346 transfers in December, a 38% decrease in transfer volume. Um, so that, that, that was really, uh, you know, that's a huge significant uh, savings if you're looking at total time you know, between, um, you know, gathering information, trying to transfer the call um, and, and increasing your response time. So um, <clears throat> so let's uh, move on to the next one. So Wi-Fi calling uh, lessons learned. Um, you know, let's, let's look at this uh, a little bit and see what we have here. Uh, knowledge based on testing of Wi-Fi calling. Okay, so this is this is you you know for Wi-Fi calling from your handset um, or or not you know handset from your I guess cellular you know so like you know if you're Verizon, AT and T or whatever if you set up for Wi-Fi calling on your phone, even if in, in airplane mode is on uh, 91 call attempts route over the cell network normal routing to PSAP normal alley you know what what you expect um, if no uh, if no cell network is available uh, calls routes route based on network IP displayed on pre-programmed address uh, from the phone um, normal routing to PSAP customer program location so so it, it would use network IP and make a, a determination to, to route that call if no location data is available, via local network calls route based on customer program location so you know i, I was actually kind of looking at this um, right before um, uh, the program and i i don't i couldn't find where you put any location information and i don't remember putting any location information in your handset itself 
So uh, my guess is that this is actually coming out of maybe uh, billing information from your cell, cell phone. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sure of that, um, but um, I, I believe that that's, that's what uh, Caleb is trying to explain uh, or, or is trying to convey on, on this. So, you know, if, if you do, um, if you are doing a route and there is no local network or no location information based from the handset, it, it's probably going to go based on, you know, whatever's programmed, you know, into, into this, this system. So, and, you know, I, I don't know if anyone does a lot of um, um, Wi-Fi uh, calling, you know, normally I do. Um, but that's because, you know, a lot of times I do, or I am on a, a, a Wi-Fi network that I'm actually able to do a lot of Wi-Fi calling. So I do, I do do a lot of that myself. Um, and I have done 911 calls, uh, from my, my own handset from, you know, where I'm doing wi Wi-Fi calling and, and the geolocations always came into the local piece app here. Um, so, all right. Well, really here we're at the uh, the question part, uh, the last slide. Um, you know, I uh, hope I didn't go too fast for anybody. Um, I'm hope hope that um, you know uh, I can answer all your all your questions and, and everything. And uh, I did see that there was quite a quite a few chats coming in. Um, let me see if I can get over here to uh, the Q and A. And it doesn't look like there's there's any questions that that have been submitted so far. Um, if anyone does have any questions, you know, drop us uh, drop us some questions. Feel free to to reach out to uh, myself uh, if you have any questions. Uh, my name's Shane Rackway again at uh, Indigital, um, or you can reach out to Caleb. Um, Caleb's uh, right here on the slide. You can see Caleb's uh, uh, email in the lower right hand, right above the Indigital logo. Our telephone number is right in the center at the uh, at the bottom. You can give us a call uh, anytime. Um, even if you uh, don't have my number, you want to uh, reach out to me, um, reach out to our 1877 number and they'll be able to either transfer you to me or um, or even uh, um, send me a message and I can give you a call back if I'm unavailable to talk to you at that moment. So. All right. Awesome, man. Excellent. Excellent, excellent information. And just listening to you and looking at the slides and everything, it takes me back to when I too was working at Indigital and a lot of the work that uh, that we did, you know, going out to, um, you know, different areas, different regions of the state, but other states that, uh, um, that Indigital services to be able to get out there and really test a lot of the calls coming in there were there were a lot of times that i would be out there even even with some of the state um going around uh, especially for texting when we were doing texting and stuff and seeing where it would route and where it would go and a lot of you who are watching right now if you've never gone and uh you know to certain sections of your county or the you know where you um where you cover and do some of these test calls um it's pretty eye opening to go into some spots and to see where exactly it goes and where it's routing and to be able to take advantage of you know all of this to make sure that it's going where it's supposed to be going which would be you <laughs> that's that's a, a big thing to be able to get out there and you know do some geo rides do some test calls and see where everything is going. And again, any questions or anything, you can get a hold of either uh, Caleb, but especially uh, Shane here if you are in uh, Indiana. But even if you're not in Indiana and you just have some questions and such, uh, please make sure to reach out and uh, get a hold of them. Thank you, man. This is yeah. good. You know, Ricardo, Ricardo one, th one other thing we can just talk about real quickly is even if mm -hmm. you don't have one of these events, but you do have an event in your community, you're trying to figure out, you don't even have to be an indigital customer. If you can get, you know, all the calls during those events and you can get the geolocation information for those calls, you can work with your, your county or your city uh, GIS to, to put that data together and give you a visual map. You know, it doesn't have to be set up for the event. You can, you can actually backtrack and look at, you know, more recent events to try and figure out, you know, do I set up a geofence? Is it beneficial for me to do that? Um, you know, you can you can actually do a study pretty easily yourself just by, you know, 
just getting your call data and having someone help you kind of plot those. If, if you're in a digital customer, you know, we have that data, so we can, we can kind of pull that data, we can develop the maps, and that's the reason why we're able to kind of show what we've done here. But even if you're not, you know, it, you're not, you're not handcuffed. You can, you can, if you can get the data, you can, you can do your own studies and try and figure out, can, can this be beneficial for me or not? Yeah, agreed. And just like in the, uh, in the chat here, uh, Rob McMullen, who's the director out of Knox County now, uh, he was just mentioning how he used geo routing uh, at his former PSAP when they, they did an event out there. And uh, I remember that one. It was, it was pretty cool to see, but also just the fact that, you know, everyone now you can actually visualize your data where before it was just numbers, right? <laughs> unless, right. unless, you know, you got a hold of somebody, you got a hold of whoever was doing your mapping to say, Hey, can we try to figure out a study here? But it's so much easier now than what it was before. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for the uh, Indiana state board reports, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, a lot of times events happen, you mm -hmm. know, um, you could have, um, uh, you know, it, just a simple thing like the Colts game, you know, you know, where I, you know, we don't have a geofence, but, you know, I can, I can basically pull, pull call data and then we can plot it to a map and see how many calls that that, that particular game, you know, created. Or if you had like a large fire in a community and you want to know how many calls, you know, because maybe your, maybe your PSAP became overloaded, but you want to, you want to visualize where those calls were actually plotting at in that event. You know, you get that data, you plot those calls and, it becomes part of your after action, you know, uh, trying to figure out how, how can you, how can you do things better? You know, um, even if you're not going to be able to set up a geofence, it does give you information that you could utilize to better manage your PSAP and better manage your, your, your operations. So. Awesome. Yes. Love it. And again, man, thank you for, for jumping in and, uh, and being here. And as always uh, a big shout out to Indigital for, for everything and, and being, you know, a sponsor of the, uh, of Dare to be Great 4. Thank you. All right. Hey, thank you very much, Ricardo. All right, everybody, we're going to be going to uh, the next one. I'm going to bring you all over there. This next session is actually going to start at 1115. And uh, so you got a little break here to go use the restroom, do whatever. And then uh, we're going to have uh, my homeboy, <laughs> Rob Big Mac McMullen, <laughs> director with Knox County 911, and he's going to be jumping in next to do protocol-based dispatching, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We will see you in the next one. Thanks.